Byron and the Byronic Hero. Here is a picture of Lord Byron uh, looking big R romantic, small R romantic, and as we would now say, Byronic. Byron is an outlier. Uh, among the major romantic poets. One of my professors, Jerome McGann, used to say that you could easily come up with a definition of romanticism that covered all the romantic poets as long as you left out Byron. But we can't leave out Byron. Uh, he was a major poet. He was a celebrity of the period. And he made significant contributions to romanticism and romantic poetry. But he was definitely different from the others. First, he didn't reject the poetry of the English Enlightenment, the Augustan Age, as the others did. Uh, but in fact, he names Alexander Pope as one of his inspirations. He also uses the major form of the Enlightenment, satire, uh, and he often adopts a distanced and cynical attitude. Um, to political matters. So you'll notice Shelley's attitude is engaged and angry. Um, a lot of Byron's poems are distanced and cynical. When he writes nature poetry, it's generally about the sublime, the storms, the oceans, the, the mountains, the cliffs, rather than Wordsworth's beautiful nature. Um, and he doesn't say much about learning wisdom from nature at all. Moreover, he doesn't idealize simple people or use simple language. In fact, he made fun of the lake poets, or the Lakers, as he would call them, uh, Wordsworth and Coleridge. But um, one value of Romanticism he supported wholeheartedly, and that was liberty. Um, unlike the other Romantics, though, he took an active role in the fight for freedom, not through his words, but through his investments and his actions. He actively supported the Greek War of Independence from the Ottoman Empire and, in fact, uh, died in 1824 while he was preparing to lead Greek troops into battle against the Ottomans. Um, so, in some ways, he put his money where his mouth was. Uh, he put his body where his mouth was. Byron, um, Byron's life was characterized by scandal. Uh, he was flamboyant, he was reckless, he was often in debt. Uh, he had numerous love affairs uh, with both men and women, clearly bisexual, um, and notoriously with his own half-sister. He ended up um, leaving England, a sort of self-imposed exile, traveling and living in different countries throughout Europe. Uh, Lady Catherine Lamb famously characterized him as mad, bad, and dangerous to know. Um, Byron also gave us a kind of character that's still significant in our culture today, the Byronic hero. Uh, and this portrait of Byron in Albanian dress, I think, very much shows him as a kind of Byronic hero. Lord Macaulay uh, was the first to give a clear definition of the Byronic hero, and his definition is often quoted. A man proud, moody, cynical, with defiance on his brow and misery in his heart, a scorner of his kind, implacable in revenge, yet capable of deep and strong affection. Uh, Byron created several versions of the Byronic hero in his poetry, uh, but probably his most famous creation of a Byronic hero was his creation of the public image of himself as a Byronic hero, so that people would read his poems as self-portraits of one kind or another. Here's a list, not a complete list, uh, but a useful one of the characteristics of the Byronic hero. Um, a Byronic hero is a certain kind of anti-heroes, but not all anti-heroes are Byronic heroes. Byronic heroes have specific characteristics. Moody, Arrogant, cynical, and world-weary seems to have been there, done that, no longer enthusiastic about anything. 
mysterious, charismatic, alienated from society. And sometimes he's actually an exile or an outcast or an outlaw. Um, sexually attractive. Very important characteristic. Haunted by his secret past. Um, sometimes there seems to be a crime in his background um, that he can't escape. But also capable, as Macaulay said, of deep affection generally for one particular woman. Here are some examples of the Byronic hero. Uh, in Byron's poetry, you have the Gior, uh, which is a word for infidel, so he's alienated from uh, the religion of those around him. The Corsair, uh, who is a pirate, Child Herald, Manfred, and many others. But you see the Byronic hero cropping up in later Victorian literature and even beyond. So Rochester in Jane Eyre uh, is a famous Byronic hero. Heathcliff in Wuthering Heights, if you've had the opportunity to read either of those books by the Bronte sisters. Um, and Severus Snape in the Harry Potter series is actually a great modern example. So he's moody, arrogant, cynical, mysterious, alienated. He's haunted by a secret past as a Death Eater, um, and he harbors a deep love his whole life for one woman, for Lily Potter. Right? So um, some people argue whether or not he's sexually attractive. In my own view, if he's Alan Rickman, he's sexually attractive, but um, all the other characteristics he clearly has. Um, in the movies, uh, lots of Byronic heroes, and maybe more recently than ever before. Uh, Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind. Uh, Rick, Rick Blaine, uh, the Humphrey Bogart character in Casablanca. Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, Edward Cullen in Twilight, as well as most modern vampires. The Phantom of the Opera, um, a whole long list. And... There are Byronic superheroes. Uh, Wolverine from X-Men is an example. Batman or Batman Bruce Wayne um, is also uh, an excellent example of the Byronic hero. So although Byron's works themselves are magnificent and endlessly fascinating, Byron's most lasting legacy may be his creation of the Byronic hero.